This episode of Casual Friday is brought to you by Audible. This is fine. You know that this is right? this is fine. Max and Zach, they're down in the Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at the Call of Duty. God bless them. And, and that stuff. Um, do you guys think it's gonna hold out? I'm not saying that this game is gonna be bad. I'm not saying it's gonna be good. But there's so much speculation. I am one of the people that think this is the year where Call of Duty won't do as well. I mean, you think? You know, I'm not saying no, every year I say that, but and like, then I'm proven wrong. But. Do you think it's because of the ghosts and like the fact no, that they? No, no. I just think that like at some point, like the is Kardashians. Call of Duty haunted? Yeah. It's a survival horror game now, Anthony. Give the program. <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> I mean, Call of Duty, like the Kardashians, mm -hmm. like a network that's ostensibly about video games, they will all come to an end at some point. And, you know, and, that, but, and then Call of Duty seems to just buck that. Every, I mean, it just keeps on making more money and more money and more money. Here's Although, the thing. I think we sort of feel, because we see, you know, we talk games, we think about games, we, we're talking to people about games all the time. We hear the backlash. And every year there's a little bit more backlash about Call of Duty. There's a little more, it's the same thing every year. There's a little more like, oh, I can't believe it. Uh, it's one of those things where it's beginning to be used in some circles as like an insult. Like you play oh, Call yeah. of Duty, that's what your taste in games is. It's um, like wearing Wrangler jeans back yeah. in 1987. But it's a very small bubble that we're in, right? Like that bubble doesn't include every single human no. being in the world. Which is who buys Call of Duty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, everybody buys. Like, even I have fun with Call of Duty. I'm not, like, a huge fan, but I can get down with some Call of Duty. Yeah. It's good. I mean, there are people who like to I'm hate on everything. Terrible at Call of Duty. I'm worse. Yeah. I mean, you have to well, play a lot. Too. Yeah, that's my biggest issue. It's not so much that there's something inherently wrong with the game. Is mm -hmm. that because so many people play it, and there of, of that many people, there are way too many good people that... Within hours, suddenly, if, unless I'm playing with close friends, yeah. it's just not viable. Well, you look right here in the office, you look at Jackie. Jackie plays, mm -hmm. like, when a new one comes out, that's what she does, like, 10 hours a day. And she's good at every map before I can even take the shrink wrap off of the game. Like, people are obsessed about it. Mm -hmm. And it's, they do get really, really good. Like, watching a really good Call of Duty player is kind of impressive and fascinating. You know, people who yeah. know how to, like, knife people yeah like, as an effective strategy within the game i'm still trying to get the shoot people part down mm -hmm. <laughs> it's almost like a club right that you can't be in because you're not dedicated or interested enough but it's, it's fun it, yeah. to hate on people who so are is, like yeah. in clubs is that where you think the sort of cap on it is going to be or where they're where they're going to hit critical mass and lower is that we can't be we can't be as good as these people are now there's no way to catch up is that or, or, no, or, or, or if tastes are going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, I see a game like Titanfall, yeah. or, you know, I, I was doing the Splinter Cell review, and I was playing Spiders vs. Mercs, and I'm like, ooh, that that really hit my sweet spot. Like, mm -hmm. okay, that, and that, you know, will taste change? Hey, I want something different, you know? You know, it's, it's like, I'm not saying that the Call of Duty is a pet rock, but mm -hmm. things just have their moment, and then people want to move on to, to, to something else, but conventional wisdom was, would have said that that would have already happened, and it just, it just hasn't. It's, I, yeah. it's funny, I think the new, I think the new generation of consoles is going to revitalize it. I really do. I think, I think things are waning, but I think just the fact that we're going to have new boxes with new technical limitations is going to get people interested in all kinds of franchises that they maybe have fallen a little out of love with. Yeah. Just to see what they look like now, yeah. how they feel now, how they're different, and that may actually bring more interest into it over the next couple of years. Yeah. Well, look at Titanfall, mm -hmm. right? That's like, it's a lot like Call of Duty, but people are so into it because A, they're taking measures to be able to actually introduce newcomers and not have them completely obliterated. And they're, I don't know, it's like they're they are not buying so much into the like, oh, we're like military shooter, you yes. know? Like, yeah. it's like, it's not as, clubby of a feel as Call of Duty is. But it, I think it, it, people... It's not as much cheese mode. I mean, yeah. you're still playing exactly. a lot of games. Granted, like, it looks like that they're trying to... And granted, in Call of Duty Ghost, the multiplayer is probably female characters that you mm -hmm. can play with. Mm -hmm. But there's something about seeing mechs yeah. that just feels, and strangely enough, it's, a little more inclusive. It's nerdier, right? <laughs> it's yeah. robots. It's robots. Right? <laughs> it's, I don't know anything about the military, 
But I know that nobody knows anything about robots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, I, look, once again, I love Call of Duty. I get what they're all about. But it's not a kind of fantasy I've ever had. I've never said, I want to go to a poor country and shoot people. No. I have said, I want to get in a mech and blow the shit out of that. But yeah. as time goes on, the fact that this is global military theater is being less noticed and less diminished, and it's being looked at more as a sports franchise. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like what's going on now is this is no longer a military sim like it is, but this is the same kind of person who buys this every year might be the same kind of person who buys the refresh of a sports franchise every year. Or just GTA when it comes out. Exactly. Like, they know the well, but GTA is games. GTA is not on like this yearly sports well, no Madden, sim. FIFA. Yeah, all exactly. Those games. Yeah. Exactly. There, yeah, and there are people who just buy consoles to be able to play those games. Like, there's a million people out there, probably more, who own an Xbox and have one game for it, mm -hmm. and that's Call of Duty. Or I guess, like, seven or eight. And what's maybe. interesting is that yearly schedule was really something that was only for sports games mm -hmm. until Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Like, the fact that Call of Duty is a sports game, I think, is just reflected in the fact that, like, this is a shooter, where there is yeah. a new one every year now, and the differences are marginal, but that's fine because if you're a competitive player, you want those stat changes. Exactly. You want those roster changes. See, what's what's funny is that doesn't explain Assassin's Creed because you can't say it's a sports game. Assassin's Creed probably has a few more subtle nuances <laughs> from game to game than Call of Duty. Um, but you're right. I mean, it, it is predominantly a multiplayer game, and those are the people who are going to be, you know. I guess sort of indirectly dictating what changes get made to the series. And people don't like change when it comes to Call of Duty. Like that's what I've realized. Like yeah. people, people, like people look at the guy who change, got death threats. Look There's at the guy who got death threats for yeah. making the most minuscule change that. The sniper rifle change, yeah. yeah. There was, some, yeah. There's this rubber band, right? And I think it's in all franchises, but especially in these competitive multiplayer ones where it's like, you have to update enough to make it worthwhile. But if you update too much, people don't like because it's not what mm -hmm. they it's not what yeah. they came to play. Yeah. But it's funny like watching the popularity of Call of Duty make something like a yearly refresh of Assassin's Creed acceptable to us too. Yeah. You know, like I never if you had come out with any other franchise every year like before Call of Duty, if you had been like, oh did you just finish this new game? Cause there's the second one next yeah. year. Whoa, hold on. Mm -hmm. Give me some time. Yeah. And Give me some breathing room. Call of Duty is one of those games also, again, because it's predominantly multiplayer, where even if you don't want to buy the next game that's coming out, if your friends are buying it, you're going to buy that's, it. That's, and I think, I still think it will be something like Call of Duty that's going to determine the success of one of the new consoles. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be a multiplayer game and probably Call of Duty. It's like, well, if you have a, a PS4, and you're playing Call of Duty on it, then if I want to play with you, I better go get that yeah. PS4. Yeah. And we never, we did not have that occurring in the last round of, of console launches. So the impact that this franchise and, you know, I think some other ones that don't have as yeah. broad a reach, you know, that's gonna be a huge dictating factor. Yeah. I, I, so, I think a lot about like, why people hate Call of Duty so much. Cause it's like, it's like cool to hate it, you know? Like mm -hmm. even on videos where we don't talk about Call of Duty, people are always in the comments, like calling people, you know, words that I can't repeat on sure. the show because they're horribly offensive. Like Call of Duty. Exactly. <laughs> um, I think God. some of that comes from like Activision as a company and their business practices and maybe not necessarily from the game itself. Yeah. I, I think some of it's also, I, I call it the Red Hat Chili Peppers effect because I used to love that band, Uplift Mofo Party Plan, and Mother's Milk. <laughs> and then, you know, Blood Sugar Sex Magic comes out, which mm -hmm. is a very good album. And there's that Under the Bridge song. Yeah. And then I went to Lollapalooza the first time they tried it. And, you know, they played, they were the headlining band, and Under the Bridge comes on, and I saw suddenly a sea of 12 year old girls put up laters. And suddenly it was that. I have to share my band that has names yeah. of songs that I can't actually say out loud with you. And I think, and I've seen this a lot with games. It's like, everyone wants it to be art and want it to be accepted, but they don't want to share it. Yeah. And the most sharing yeah. that has ever happened had happened with the emergence of Call of Duty as this you know, sort of worldwide sensation. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think in any, in any medium, whatever is considered the, the lowest common denominator, which lowest common denominator just means the most people like it. Yeah. That's all it means. But whatever is seen as the lowest common denominator to show that you have taste, 
to show that you're somebody who knows the medium, you have mm -hmm. to be like, oh, yeah, I used to play that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to play that, but now, oh gosh, my tastes are so much more refined. I've read a lot of Bud people Weiser. also. <laughs> I remember, yeah, <laughs> I remember when I was into Reverend Horton, he <laughs> you'll get through it, you'll be okay. <laughs> Every time you mention a band, I picture you riding a penny farthing. <laughs> I love just, that idea. Just a bicycle with a giant ass <laughs> wheel in the front and a little one in the back. <laughs> Hi, kids. Uh, yeah, so I feel like, yes, you're, you're gonna have people that are just like, I'm gonna say that I dislike this because it's, I want people to know that I've moved on. But when you sit down and you play multiplayer Call of Duty, dude, it's a really refined, really good arcadey multiplayer competitive experience. Like, yeah, it's, it's good. Like, nobody yeah. has it as down as they have it. Yeah, we, when, you, you, when you consider all the, uh, because it's the other thing we're complaining about, oh, that throwaway multiplayer. Go play that throwaway <laughs> multiplayer. It's a lot worse than yeah. Call of Duty is. Yeah, I totally. Think, yeah, I mean, people, another complaint that I've heard of a lot is um, people saying that like, when they release games every year like this, it leaves less room for other games to be recognized. But again, I'm like, the people playing Call of Duty, like, Hundreds of hours a we're, year. We're, no, we're, we're not they weren't going to be buying yeah. whatever indie game is hot on Xbox Live this and, week. And in reality, you would think that coming out with that game every year would cause the sort of fatigue that we're talking about. Yeah. It would make people seek out other games because mm -hmm. they'd be like, "Dude, I feel like I just bought a Call of Duty." Mm -hmm. But that's just not the grip that this game has on people. Yeah, and, and you can argue that it sort of fosters an environment of repetitiveness and lack of creativity, but at the same time, I feel like it encourages other developers to not be that way because you're not going to be able to compete with Call yeah, of I'm Duty. With you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do another military shooter? Yes, there's Battlefield. That's exactly. it. It's done. We're, we're done. You're yeah. going to have to come up yeah. with something else. Well, and I mean, I think the only valid, the only real kind of valid argument that comes out of that is the same one that comes out of sports games once again, which is um, at what point do we stop doing the yearly retail package and have a company step back and go, okay, yearly update for the next See, two that's, years. Yeah. That's what I find 20 fascinating. 20 bucks, new maps, new everything. But they still, but here's what's crazy, mind boggling, they still do the updates with the new maps and stuff. Yeah. Like it's insane the amount of content. Well, that they you make. have to keep all those people employed. Yeah. But but what I, I find so interesting <laughs> is the, the the only reason that you do justify the yearly release is not the multiplayer; it's the single player. Because if you just release the new multiplayer, it should be digital. Mm -hmm. It should be something that doesn't yeah. have to happen every year, but every, every quarter. But it's the single player that I think, rightly in most people's minds, has been kind of waning. I mean, the, the first Call of Duty was a single player game. It yeah. was really, really good. The single player Call of Duty 2 was exquisite. And you know, the, look, the single player in the first Modern Warfare, Call of Duty 4 was really strong. But you know, it's, it's that's what's, you know, Call of Duty, uh, Modern Warfare 3, I mean, mm -hmm. was just kind of like, uh, okay, all right, yeah. that's, that's okay, we can do that. If you if you really want to, <laughs> I mean, they're successful to a point now where they can't not have a single player in it, right. even if nobody mm -hmm. plays it. Like they they can't fire half of their team, you know. Like well, I mean, well, they could just make more maps, but they, I think they have to figure out how do you make money on those maps. Yeah, and that it's almost like that we we created the situation where it's like you're supposed to come in for the single player and you stay around for the multiplayer, and it really has changed in certain cases where it's just yeah. like no, you're here for the multiplayer, but they don't know how to sell that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's it's, it's fascinating. Hmm. Oh, Shadow Run. <laughs> you like Casual Friday? That's why you're here. So why not support the show and sign up for Audible? They have over 100,000 audiobooks and spoken word entertainment in every genre to be downloaded to your phone, your MP3 player, and played back anywhere, anytime. This week, after our Call of Duty discussion, I'm recommending a book that's a different take, a much different take on war. It's Dalton Trumbo's Johnny Got His Gun. You can go to audiblepodcast.com slash casual to get a free audiobook download when you sign up today. You'll get to listen to some nice words and you'll be supporting Casual Friday.